pleasure to participate uh, to this workshop in the memory of Maria Petru. She has been a long standing colleague of mine uh, while she was at the University of Surrey. Actually, our uh, relationship, professional relationship, uh, lasted uh, more than 18 years. And uh, it was a formative uh, part of her career development uh, as an engineer. She started uh, as a scientist but uh, moved to engineering uh, very early on in her career. So I'd like to just uh, overview some of the uh, historical uh, data uh, relating to her uh, activities at Surrey and uh, her career there. Uh, Her career was very closely linked to mine. Actually, before I myself went to the University of Surrey, which was in 1986, I worked for the uh, National Science Foundation in the UK, which is now called Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. Uh, at the time, it was called uh, Science Research Council. And uh, uh, while I was uh, at some sort of uh, administrative responsibility, but apart from that, uh, I was allowed to spend some of my time doing the research and uh, managed to get a couple of research projects. And uh, uh, in 1986, uh, Maria joined me at uh, the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, which is the main uh, research establishment of this uh, council. <coughs> She joined me there to work on one of these uh, research projects uh, together with a couple of other colleagues uh, uh, who, uh, one of them also joined us at Surrey. Uh, anyway, uh, the year after, I think actually 85 she joined, and uh, the year after I moved to the University of Surrey and I was still looking after the research activity at uh, Rutherford Appleton Lab. Uh, but the uh, uh, University of Surrey at that time was expanding its uh, uh, department, its uh, provision uh, for uh, education at the university level and uh, was uh, hiring new staff. In particular, the department was uh, uh, focusing on materials research and uh, the idea was to expand into communications area and also into signal processing area and this is uh, how I got uh, my job then. But uh, with that opportunity I had uh, a few openings and uh, uh, within uh, uh, six months of working with Maria at uh, the Rutherford Lab it was uh, clear to me that uh, she would be uh, an extremely promising person to attract to the University of uh, Surrey and this is what happened. So uh, I know her since um, 85 pr professionally and uh, she joined the uh, University of Surrey in uh, uh, 88 and uh, uh, as a lecturer, so this is uh, like assistant professor on sort of Ameri uh, American scale of uh, academic jobs. She had a uh, background in science, in physics uh, from the University of Thessaloniki, uh, but uh, then uh, because she performed extremely well, got uh, an opportunity to go to study at the University of Cambridge. Uh, I have here a PhD in astronomy, but actually before doing that, uh, she did uh, part three of mathematical science tripos uh, in Cambridge, which was extremely challenging uh, course to, to undertake. And only the top students from this, uh, uh, from this course uh, would be uh, allowed to continue with PhD in astronomy and uh, Maria, of course, was uh, one of those students. And after finishing her PhD, uh, she spent a couple of years in Greece, but uh, then uh, uh, wanted to do research full time and went back to UK 
Kay, got a fellow research fellowship in Oxford, uh, still working in, uh, in sciences, in astronomy, but uh, at the time she was beginning to realize that uh, maybe the opportunities in sciences were not uh, as uh, wide as in engineering, and uh, especially since uh, uh, her husband at the time also was a scientist, so two scientists looking for a job was not a very good prospect uh, in the sense of uh, location, so she decided to switch to engineering and uh, uh, applied for one of the lectureships that we advertised at Surrey and, uh, and was uh, offered the post. Uh, while at Surrey she was teaching at the master's level uh, and uh, taught a course on image processing and uh, to support the course, uh, she wrote a book, which was uh, published in 1999, uh, Image Processing, The Fundamentals. Uh, it uh, was a very popular book. Uh, uh, many people liked it and it was reprinted several times. Uh, she progressed in her career very rapidly and uh, became a full professor in 1998. So, I uh, should have mentioned that uh, when she joined the University of Surrey, she had a little pokey office uh, uh, for like university lecturers, but uh, when she was uh, promoted to professor, she got much better office, and this picture was taken uh, in her new office, which had uh, just, uh, nicely decorated, a lot of space for her books. And, Anyway, so this is the uh, front cover of Maria's uh, book on image processing and uh, as I said, it was reprinted several times, but uh, um, also I think translated to other languages and this is uh, I think the recent uh, translation which uh, appeared uh, in China. So, during uh, uh, period at Surrey, uh, Maria was uh, also the director of postgraduate studies for three years, so that was during the period 98 to 2001, and uh, here we have a picture with one of the graduates of the master course uh, uh, on uh, which she was teaching. Uh, so she contributed to uh, all aspects of uh, academic life, uh, life at Surrey, uh, teaching, uh, PhD student supervision and uh, administration, but uh, most importantly, uh, research. I think uh, she loved doing research. Uh, she focused in her research on multidimensional signal processing. And uh, when I was looking at uh, the publications which uh, she produced during the period, uh, of her career at Surrey. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, she produced something like almost 100 uh, research papers, uh, journal papers, and uh, several hundred uh, conference papers. And uh, I was just looking at uh, some of the key uh, methodological ideas. So, uh, uh, research focus on the development of uh, signal processing methodology applicable to multidimensional signals like images and video, but uh, 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 also on applications and uh, in the center for vision, speech and signal processing with uh, which she was associated and actually helped considerably to build it during her period at Surrey. She was resp responsible for uh, the development of activities in uh, two major areas. Uh, one was uh, remote sensing and uh, the other one uh, was biological <coughs> signal processing and uh, medical imaging. Uh, but as I was going through the uh, huge list of papers, uh, uh, I was speaking on uh, various uh, ideas that uh, she worked on uh, while at study and um, the list was extremely long, so I 
take it on with just a small subset. But uh, the first thing that actually she looked at, and uh, that was already when she joined me at Rutherford Lab before coming to Surrey, was um, edge and line detection. And I will say a few more words about uh, each of those four. But uh, then we worked also in connection with remote sensing on contextual decision making, decision -making because you are trying to interpret uh, uh, pixel, pixels, uh, image pixels, and uh, what they re represent uh, in terms of uh, land cover in the case of remote sensing and how one can uh, benefit from uh, wider context uh, in that application. Uh, she worked on uh, uh, techniques of uh, feature extraction for image analysis, uh, how to extract measurements which are invariant to various uh, degrading, uh, degrading transformations, and uh, also on uh, Markov models. So I have no ma mathematical formulae, but just to give you a flavor what she did and how she approached it. So, uh, for instance, a very simple and basic problem of detecting edges, so the areas in images where there is a rapid change and therefore there may be something of interest, the boundary of an object, or, uh, uh, something interesting to look at. Uh, the traditional view of an edge was that there was a step change. But uh, if you actually think about it, uh, unless you have uh, uh, data which is uh, generated, uh, you know, so graphics data which is completely generated, any data which is acquired by a camera, because uh, uh, no sensor has uh, infinite bandwidth, any uh, uh, edges or will have a smooth transition. So the idea that actually the underlying signal is a step edge. grossly simplifying assumption and uh, so she actually uh, worked on uh, the development of a detector which is optimal uh, under the assumption that the edges are not step edges but that the edges are ramps or uh, changing smoothly and uh, she applied it uh, very successfully to very difficult applications this is just one of them where you are where she was uh, trying to detect uh, pipelines which are actually buried, okay, so uh, construct a pipeline, it's covered, but uh, they have to be regularly inspected because uh, very often local people forget that there is a pipeline that may try to dig somewhere and uh, potentially it could be dangerous, so uh, there has to be a regular inspection which can be done either <coughs> from aerial photography or from satellites and uh, you are looking for uh, very structures, and you can see just very see <coughs> that there is uh, some line which uh, is uh, barely detectable and certainly was not detectable by the techniques which were available at that time, but uh, with her method of detecting lines, uh, she was able to detect it, uh, and um, basically the difference uh, uh, between the land cover in this image uh, between uh, neighboring pixels and the pixels on, uh, where the pipeline was, was that it changes the drainage pattern and uh, affects uh, for the vegetation on top of the uh, surface and uh, with very sensitive uh, detectors and pull it out. She worked on uh, contextual decision making, so if you have a network of objects or Object primitives, which you try to interpret. Uh, normally, one would be taking measurements about uh, a single object and try to use these measurements to interpret what this object is. But uh, in contextual decision making, you are also looking at neighbors. And uh, uh, Maria contributed uh, uh, to the development of a uh, use of a theory which uh, uh, made it, uh, well, which is Bayesian approach, reasoning approach, to determine how the information, not only from the measurements of uh, an object, but also
so that contextual information should be taken into, into account to solve the problem of interpretation better. Now, anything she touched uh, ended up in a very high quality publications. Uh, and, uh, the top uh, journal in our field is pattern analysis and uh, uh, the IEEE transactions on pattern analysis and machine intelligence. And uh, all these examples I'm given because <coughs> all those uh, one or two publications uh, uh, from the work which end up in this uh, uh, top ranking journal. Another topic which uh, she embraced again with uh, great vigor was uh, one of how to uh, design uh, multi resolution Markov fields. So these are sort of, again contextual models for image data, but uh, if you try to process uh, an image at some level, very often you are dealing with a huge number of pixels, and uh, it very often helps if you reduce the resolution of the image and do some initial processing at uh, lower resolution at a higher level. But uh, again, if you try to use a Markov model, a so contextual model, uh, to help you, you have to make sure that these two models at different resolutions are consistent. In the past, people did not worry too much about it. Uh, they just uh, defined uh, uh, Markov models at uh, separate levels without uh, thinking about consistency. And uh, she worked on uh, with her physics background, uh, applied renormalization group theory uh, to solve the problem, which uh, uh, how to make the Markov fields consistent over scales. And uh, with uh, one of my PhD students, uh, she uh, applied it to the problem of uh, motion estimation in uh, uh, video processing and uh, for video compression. And uh, just the impact of the work that she has done, well, uh, just at the bottom, giving an example of the work which uh, has been done by, uh, in collaboration with. Uh, student who studied about uh, uh, his PhD with me about uh, uh, 10 years after this, so even 15, and then uh, went back to Iran, started his job, and still collaborated with me. And we are applying these techniques for uh, face recognition, <coughs> invariant face recognition, uh, uh, very successfully. Another very important contribution from that period uh, was uh, method called tra trace transform, which is uh, a technique for extracting uh, features which are invariant to geometric transformations. It's uh, sort of an extension of a well-known technique in image analysis known as half-transform. And uh, anyway, again, uh, uh, Maria developed uh, this, uh, this technique which uh, can uh, produce a large number of uh, features which can be tuned to be invariant to different uh, uh, degradation processes uh, in which is and uh, uh, applied it to uh, many different applications including uh, face recognition and uh, I think uh, if you look at the number of citations to all the papers they run into hundreds and there are many uh, people who are following her work and using it. As I mentioned, uh, she worked on, uh, pushed uh, two uh, main application areas, remote sensing and uh, medical imaging. In remote sensing, she uh, focused on land cover um, classification from satellite images, <laughs> which is a topic I already mentioned, but uh, uh, one of the important topics where she contributed a great deal was uh, mixed pixel classification. Uh, this was uh, motivated, so interest in this problem was motivated uh, uh, by work in remote sensing, using remote sensing data to try to uh, estimate the risk of desertification after forest fires in Greece. And uh, so that was done in collaboration with the University of Athens. And uh, uh, she worked in, on the problem of data fusion, <coughs> trying to use not only satellite data, but also information from geographic information systems. But uh, uh, one of the problems.
concerns he had was that the uh, resolution of the data we worked with was uh, relatively low. So if you are trying to measure, for instance, uh, uh, land cover, uh, one pixel, uh, it could be of the size of uh, 100 by 100 meters. And uh, mm -hmm. in principle, you can have many trees, different type of uh, vegetation in a single pixel. And she was trying to develop techniques which uh, would allow you to identify land cover and mix in proportions of the land cover corresponding to a single pixel. So again, very challenging problem. She worked on uh, many different aspects of uh, uh, medical applications uh, dealing with uh, issues of registration, uh, diagnos uh, diagnosis uh, uh, from uh, various types of medical data, multimodal fusion, motion compensation, etc. There is a long list of uh, accolades. Uh, I have not uh, managed to put everything here, but uh, these are the main uh, things. You can see that uh, quite early on she was uh, receiving a prize of some sort uh, every year or every second year. And uh, various uh, prizes for her research work, uh, but uh, was also elected to Fellowship of IEEE, which is the uh, Institution of uh, uh, Electrical Engineers uh, in the UK, and uh, she was uh, elected to fellowship of IAPR, International Association for Patent Recognition. Uh, she was elected to the Royal Academy of Engineering, which is the highest sort of uh, uh, esteem, I think, uh, which you can uh, obtain in the UK. Uh, she was also elected. Distinguished Fellowship of the British Machine Vision Association, and she got her uh, science doc uh, doctor degree from Cambridge, uh, uh, which is again the highest academic degree uh, for her work. She was uh, also extremely active, uh, providing service to the professional community in various uh, ways. Uh, she worked uh, as member of editorial board of several journals. Uh, she was responsible for, uh, as a general editor for uh, the IE journal, Electronic Letters, uh, and uh, in her field, perhaps most prestigious was uh, uh, the appointment of uh, uh, associate editor for IT <coughs> transactions on image processing. Uh, she served in that capacity from 94 to 98. She was a chairman of uh, the Professional <coughs> Society, uh, which is a home for all uh, the people working in computer vision and uh, patent recognition, so British Machine Vision Association. And uh, she was heavily involved in IAPR as a newsletter editor. Uh, she chaired the technical committee, one of the technical committee of IAPR. Uh, she's dealing with remote sensing and uh, she became a member of the executive board and uh, the treasurer of IPR uh, in 2006. Uh, when she took over, the, uh, I must admit that I'm responsible for some of these uh, duties or tasks that uh, she undertook because I will try to persuade her, knowing that she would be an excellent uh, person to do the job and indeed when she took over uh, IPR newsletter editor she uh, immediately changed the style of, uh, of the newsletter and uh, I remember many people come in uh, back to her and tell her we are waiting for the next issue, we, are, we love uh, the newsletter now because she was producing editing, uh, very interesting editorials to the newsletter and uh, also she uh, had a go at producing cartoons and uh, the second newsletter contained a cartoon drawn by Maria. And so this is uh, just uh, one of them there, sort of envisaging what will happen uh, in 50 years time or 100 years time at uh, uh, some future IAPR <coughs> CPR conference that uh, maybe this will be just a virtual conference and everybody will be sad screens at home rather than meeting on a beach somewhere. Uh, she also 
I think as a chairman of uh, technical committee uh, EC7, she introduced a series of workshops uh, in remote sensing. Um, she was uh, she served as a representative of UK on the IAPR governing board for a period of time. As I mentioned, she was a treasurer. She um, also was a program chair of the 17th ICPR, so this is the main conference in patent recognition, which was uh, held in Cambridge in 2004. Now, Maria was not only an uh, excellent colleague of mine, but uh, she was also a very good friend. We had uh, uh, kids uh, of the same age, and they actually went to the same school, so uh, this is Costa uh, here. Yeah. So, if I wanted to list uh, all the qualities, I think uh, this list would be extremely long, and I'm sure that there are many others that could be added without uh, exaggeration. Uh, she was certainly a very gifted teacher and could explain anything of any complexity to anybody, because she would find a level at which uh, to communicate examples uh, and uh, really she, uh, she was very much liked by her students uh, for this uh, uh, incredible gift. Uh, she was a fantastic researcher, scholar and uh, had many other qualities uh, that uh, uh, made her successful in all respect and uh, admired by uh, most. There are it's very nice to have this uh, workshop here in my memory, but uh, uh, there are other sort of activities uh, which are trying to uh, set up some uh, ways to, uh, to remember Maria uh, indefinitely. And uh, so one of them is uh, by well, two things uh, happen. from IAPR, uh, we have uh, produced a special issue of patent recognition letters, so it's a journal which is uh, basically a journal uh, associated with the International Association for Patent Recognition, so we have produced a special issue in their memory and it uh, appeared just now. There is also Maria Petru Prize, which is being set up by IAPR and which is uh, uh, going to be uh, a prize offered to successful female scientists, uh, not necessarily top scientists, but somebody who is, uh, has a lot of promise. And uh, Maria was always uh, particularly concerned about opportunities for women in their careers and uh, so I think this is sort of, uh, reflecting uh, what uh, she always wanted to do in her life uh, to, su to support as much as possible the underprivileged but the 
many cases uh, the disadvantaged ones were uh, coming from uh, uh, not only third world countries but uh, also in particular women where uh, they had to struggle twice as hard to achieve uh, anything. So I think I'm very pleased that uh, this is uh, what IAPR has decided in to support and uh, also in the university in the department of electronic engineering we are setting up a prize for uh, undergraduate students for best performing student in, in, in her name. So uh, just to finish, uh, in one of the IPR newsletters in the editorial, uh, Maria Kuti from Aristotle, uh, we are what we repeatedly do, excellence then is not an act but a habit and I think this is uh, something that uh, sums up Maria uh, 